Hey swimmers, Coach Kevin here, bringing you my first vlog. My topic today is being motivated during this social isolation. I know it's a tricky thing to do. A lot of us have had, you know, this mental struggle internally, you know, accepting the situation that we're in and figuring out how to move forward. Just realize we are all in this together. You know, it's every swimmer across the country, across the world, we're all in this together. And we all have these challenges. And something that's really helped me out a lot is when I see other people sharing things that they're doing on Facebook. You know, if I see some of my athletes or maybe even people from other teams doing things on Facebook, just kind of making the most out of a difficult situation, it helps keep me motivated to continue to make the most out of the difficult situation that I'm going through. And obviously me doing a lot of these videos is part of that. And this is a part of me sharing how I am moving forward with all of you. And one thing that I do want you to be very careful about is the whole keeping up with the Joneses mindset. I know social media tends to create a lot of that within people. They feel like they just need to post stuff to try to look like they're happy and successful and all of that. But what that actually does internally is it kind of brings you down a little bit. So don't look at social media as keeping up with the Joneses. Look at social media as a way to connect with someone who you are friends with. Not trying to show off, not trying to do anything like that, but just being an honest, upfront person. And you'd be surprised. Like when I go through a hard time and I post something on Facebook and I show and maybe I'm not doing my best, I get so much support from you know, just so many people. So just be upfront. Um, connect with your friends, make the most of social media to keep those connections going. Let's also make sure we are supporting and encouraging each other as much as possible. I know a lot of you do that anyways, but maybe just kind of take that extra little step to just leave a positive comment somewhere, um, click an extra like here and there, things of that nature, and just really be uplifting to everyone else around you. And we will together bring all of ourselves up. <clears throat> so with this situation, we need to keep in mind that there are things that we can control and things that we cannot control. Obviously, being swimmers, things that we can't control can have a very big impact on how we are preparing to move forward as an athlete. Not having access to pools makes our type of training very difficult. Um, obviously, being a cross-country runner, boom, you can get out there, you can run, you can still basically keep your training fairly normal. Um, and not all sports are like that. So there are more sports than just swimming that are going to be really struggling to figure out how to get through this. You know, for instance, gymnastics, they've got such specialized equipment that they use that unless they can get into their gymnastics gym, it's really difficult to prepare themselves. So we're not the only sport that has a very difficult time. And every sport's got their own unique ways of figuring out how to get through this. Now, something I've learned about swimmers over the years is we tend to rise to the challenge. I mean, I swam on a club team. I swam through high school. I swam at two different colleges. I've coached you know, probably half a dozen teams over the years. And something I see in swimmers that is a lot more common than the average person is this ability to rise up to challenges, this ability to have this work ethic and discipline that even when things aren't easy or things aren't the way you want them to be, uh, you push through that and you make the most of it and you just continue taking those steps forward. So what are things that we can do to take those steps forward? Obviously right now, we're not gonna be having these big swim practices, seeing all of our teammates, and we don't know how long that's going to last. It could be another month, it could be another two months, could be another three months, we really don't know. And so I'm really stressing that we all take this in a way that we're preparing 
for the worst, but hoping for the best, right? Let's do whatever we can, controlling whatever we can, trying to get us back to that normal training routine. Um, but there's a possibility that that's not going to happen anytime soon. And so we also have to prepare for the long run in case it turns into several months. Obviously, none of us like to think about that, and it, it, it's hard to stay positive. But in my situation, I've been figuring out all sorts of things I can do to keep taking steps forward with myself and my own life. And these videos are one of them. And so I want you thinking about what are things that you can do to keep taking those steps forward in your life. Whether it's going out for a hike, you know, three, four times a week. I know swimmers don't like to run, so hiking is a good way to kind of start building it up. Uh, some swimmers are great at running. Go out and do your runs. You know, gradually increase that mileage. You know, instead of doing those two-mile runs, gradually work it up to three-mile runs, and then four-mile runs, five-mile runs. Um, it's a nice tangible thing where you can see that progress, right? Just like you're used to with swimming, seeing all that progress in a tangible way. Now, we can also really work on our stability and our strength and our flexibility during this time. So, yeah, we're not in the water swimming mass amounts of yardage, but that allows us to spend more time doing other things with our body that we couldn't do before. And I've always been a, a big promoter of doing strength training in the preseason and the off season because it's really difficult to work those muscles, break them down, get them super sore, and then you know, go to a swim practice and swim six, 7,000 yards. It's, <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do, and it takes a lot of adapting in your body to be able to handle those, those types of training. Now, we're not in the water swimming 6,000 yards a day or whatever your normal practice routine is. So if you do break down those muscles and they're sore for the next two, three days, it's not going to really affect your swimming in the water. So there's really no concern about that. You can kind of just handle that soreness and go with it. Um, stability, and that's another thing too, where if you're already stressing out those joints and those connective tissues a whole bunch swimming those laps, doing the exercises that are going to strengthen all of that can oftentimes kind of put you over the edge and then create an injury out of it. Where if you're not doing all those constant repetitive motions, this is the perfect time to do the, the rehab, the prehab, you know, the preventative maintenance type of exercises. So then when you're back in the pool, you can push your body, you know, harder than you've ever done before. And you're not going to cause an injury because of that. So really keep that in mind and look at the opportunities that are created out of this situation. And flexibility is another big one. That's one of the main things that I see athletes neglect. They spend so much time doing all other parts of their training that they tend not to spend much time stretching out, keeping that range of motion. And that's also a part of injury prevention too because when that range of motion decreases and you're trying to force yourself into a range of motion, you know, hundreds of times throughout a practice, it's gonna seriously aggravate things. So again, also develop a good stretching routine. Figure out what areas of your body are more flexible, what areas are less flexible, and where you need to spend more of that attention to get that really good range of motion for all the different techniques that are used. And something that, you know, being a supervisor um, at a few different jobs, being a coach at a lot of different teams, even, you know, being an athlete myself and seeing everyone around me, I, I've come to realize that there's people that fit into these two different categories and there's obviously a gray area but usually it's it's pretty strong toward one side or the other there are people that make excuses and there are people that make solutions and the people that make excuses i see them make excuse again and again and again and there's just always another excuse of why they're not achieving a certain goal why they're not accomplishing something and then there's those people that make solutions. And they're always looking at their situation and figuring out what can I do 
to make a solution to make the most out of every situation, even though there may be a certain challenge, you know, instead of making the excuse because of that challenge. And will they always overcome that situation? Not always, but oftentimes they will. And that's where the person that's making the excuse is taking that step backwards, not moving forward. The person making the solution oftentimes is still going to take a step forward or maybe take a side step instead of that step backwards and then move forward again later. And the more you make those solutions, the better you get at making those solutions and the more of a positive impact those solutions are on you. And so every, every great person at what they do has major setbacks. And the interviews I've seen, um, people I've met in person and talked to, it's, there's, there's definitely a common factor in everyone who's great at what they do, and that's they're one of those people that make solutions instead of excuses. So I really encourage all of you to have that mindset. Every time you encounter a challenge, like the big challenge we're in right now, how, how do we train as a swimmer when we can't get in the pool and swim? Um, work on creating those solutions and work with your teammates, with your coaches, with your family, with your friends, and together we can make those solutions happen. I have a friend who was big into triathlons and she had a surgery. It wasn't supposed to you know, cause a huge setback in her training, but there were complications. And she was in the hospital for quite an extended period of time. Um, when she got out of the hospital, she couldn't run for a while. She couldn't do a lot of other stuff. And this happened in, you know, a time of the year kind of like we are now where it's, you know, right when a summer season's kind of, you're starting to ramp up to build up into that summer. And so instead she had to take a whole bunch of time off and really slowly just kind of get back to where she was. And once she was in midsummer, she was able to train like she was before. But again, that, that was, you know, over two months of just really trying to get back to where she was after that surgery with all the complications. And by the end of the summer, she was the fastest she had ever been by a long shot. It, it was amazing. You know, she qualified for nationals, did really well there. And she is just such a good example of someone who was put in a very challenging situation, made those solutions, and kept moving forward. And that positive mindset is a huge part of it. You need to keep telling yourself why you can do it. You know, don't tell yourself why you can't do it, right? Anytime you start thinking negative, just switch the topic in your brain, you know, start finding those positive things. And again, that's where all of us together can really help. If we're constantly giving each other that positive support, it makes it a lot easier to have that positive mental mindset and come up with those solutions. You may have noticed I'm wearing kind of an older shirt. I uh, brought it out of the closet, haven't worn it in a while. I tend to wear it just very sparingly. Um, because this was a team that I coached that just blew people's minds out of the water. So most of you probably aren't familiar with IMSA, but it is a school for people who are really smart in math and science. And so when the students go there, they live on campus. It's a high school that's more like a college. They live on campus. They learn these really academically challenging subjects and have like three times as much homework as the typical high school student, plus a longer school day usually. So it's, they are challenged to the max academically. And then those who are also athletes have to figure out how to balance, you know, the super challenging academic workload with that athletic workload. And so my swimmers typically train about six hours less per week than the typical competitive swim team. You know, we're not doing anywhere near as many doubles. Um, a lot of our practices are probably, you know, 15 minutes or half an hour shorter than the other teams that are out there. But we didn't look at that as an excuse we always looked at, well, what are the solutions to it? And it wasn't just me, it was the athletes too. And all of us together, we just kind of had this mindset of, 
what's the solution? How are we still going to achieve our potential? And we accomplished things that no other team around us, you know, no other coach even at that school thought like a sports team there could accomplish. I even remember uh, our dean would always say, oh, there's something in the water, you know, like that our swimmers just were able to do this, you know, very skilled um, performance with a sport while being academically at the top. And like I said, I think that's a trait that swimmers have a lot more than the normal person. And so a normal routine for them going into the season would be to strength train about three times a week and to swim once or twice a week because they lived on campus. They didn't have that easy access to their club team for that constant you know, training year round. And, you know, despite having that much more difficult preseason um, training schedule, they still came in and they were able to make big improvements one year into the next, into the next with that type of preseason training. And so I want you to keep that in mind because right now we're going to be doing a lot of that type of training. We're going to be doing a lot of strength training, building ourselves up, so then when we can consistently get back in the pool, bam, we're we're ready to go, we're ready to push ourselves and get right back to those PRs. And for those of you that don't know much about this team, I mean, every swimmer PR'd that year. Uh, They went to state, they got 14th place, which was impressive because they're such a small school. They have 600-something students. And so there wasn't any school anywhere near their size that came anywhere near that high of a place at the meet. And, you know, we even had a swimmer that got Comcast Athlete of the Week and was the only male swimmer to receive that award for the entire year. And it wasn't because he was a state champion, but it was because he was a state champion that had those extra challenges and made those solutions and over came those challenges to still accomplish that goal. And so that's what I want all of you thinking about. These challenges are just a reason to rise up and create a solution and develop ourselves even further into this, you know, mindset of what makes people great. So now what I want us thinking about is how do we keep taking steps forward instead of we just worked hard last season, took two steps forward, now we're going to take a step backwards. And we can still take a step forward. So the physiology of your body and how it responds to training is important to understand to be able to see how you can still take a step forward. So cardiovascular endurance, you're going to lose some of that. It's inevitable. That's just going to happen. But there was a study done that I read a while back where they they studied all these college endurance athletes and they figured out where they were at at the beginning of the season, measured their cardiovascular endurance at the end of the season, and then measured it again a month after the end of the season. And those athletes that were not training regularly after that season ended lost 80% of everything they built up in six months in that one month. So cardiovascular endurance, you get it and you lose it. I mean, it does take a couple months to to really get it back, but you can lose it so fast. So that's something that athletes typically experience on a yearly basis anyways. As soon as you take that month off, boom, you just lost it. I'm sure you've even been in that situation where you took a week off and you hop in the pool and you're like, oh my goodness, like I just, I have no way of, of keeping up with this cardio And it just shows how fast you lose that cardio. So don't even worry about that you're losing it because you'll get it back. And that's just a normal cycle that happens from season to season anyways. Muscular endurance, um, you're going to lose quite a bit of that. But it does tend to come back in a reasonable amount of time as well. And I've had a lot of a lot of swimmers that, you know, maybe they also do cross country. And so they take that extended period of time off swimming And when they come back, they have the cardio, but they don't have the muscular endurance. And again, it usually takes about one to two months before 
their muscles can do those repeated motions and keep up with where their cardio is at and do those longer distance swims effectively. So you can get it back reasonably quick. Uh, your lactic threshold. So pushing through toward the end of those races uh, when that lactic acid's building up in your muscles. Again, that's another thing that goes quickly and you'll build it back up. And usually that's something that's not even built up a ton until you're about mid season anyways. Um, and then most teams tend to do a little bit more working on pushing through that lactic threshold on that second half of the season. Now, those things are things that come and go anyways, right? And something that has more staying power is your actual strength. Um, the actual stability of your joints and those connective tissues kind of holding everything. And uh, flexibility. Um, that one can go fairly quickly anyways. But like I said, most athletes don't do a ton of stretching working on that flexibility regardless. So, not being in the pool, we can absolutely work on that strength. And strength has staying power. Right? When you do a ton of strength training, and then you take a week off, you're actually stronger when you come back after that week because your muscles are rebuilding and developing that entire time, right? And that atrophy doesn't start super quick like it does with your cardiovascular endurance. You know, you take a month off, you're not going to lose 80% of what you gained in six months prior. So that's why strength training in the preseason is awesome, you build up that strength and you can easily hold on to it through the season. If your strength training is reduced, you can still hold on to it. Uh, stability, right? And so muscles are a big part of your stability. Stability. So just like developing your strength, it works kind of the same way. Um, also those connective tissues. Connective tissues have a lot more staying power. You know, once you develop those strong connective tissues, those muscles that stabilize and hold everything in place, it doesn't just disappear right away. And it's something that you can easily maintain throughout the season, even though you're not doing as much of that as you were in the preseason. So develop that strength, develop that stability, and then as you get into the season, you're going to have that and you're going to keep it throughout the season, and it's going to be better than it ever was before. And so to close, remember... We are all in this together, support each other, help each other out, be real, right? Don't make excuses and make solutions. Every person who is great goes through adversity, but they figure out solutions and they move forward. Even if it means they're sidestepping instead of forward stepping, at least they're not backstepping. They're using that situation to then take more steps forward later. So, be strong and be elite.